The dedicated freight corridors is one of independent India's most ambitious infrastructure projects, close to 18 years in the making, and will bring the Indian railways into the 21st century. Let's look at what these DFCs are, why they are so important, and how each of us is going to benefit from them. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and as always, nothing in this video or any content on this channel is a recommendation to or not to buy, sell or hold any security. Please do your own due diligence before dealing in any security. So what are the DFCs and why do we need them? Originally conceptualized in 2005, the DFC plan envisages two corridors, simply named the Western Corridor, which connects Dadri in Uttar Pradesh to the Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust in Mumbai, and the Eastern Corridor, which connects Ludhiana and Punjab to Dankuni in West Bengal. As the name suggests, these are dedicated rail lines connecting major industrial centres and hubs that account for large chunks of freight traffic in the country. The importance of railways in transporting freight has steadily declined in India, with its share in freight traffic falling from 88% in 1950 to just 26% in 2022. An ineffective railroad system will hamstring any large country from building its manufacturing capability. This reality form the basis of the dedicated freight corridor project. Dedicated lines allow for rapid and efficient transport of goods, with reduced wait times and congestion. They also allow for precision railroading and fast changeover in the case of intermodal transport systems. Don't worry, I will explain these in detail as we go along. The most obvious advantage of the DFCs is the increased efficiency. A dedicated system allows for carrying heavier payloads and more volume over greater distance with greater speed. This leads to very real savings, which ultimately benefits not only the bottom line of sellers of goods, but end consumers like you and me as well. Let's look at some data points to understand this better. First and foremost, the DFCs are designed to move larger containers. The volume of the typical Western Corridor freight container will be about 80% more than that of the current Indian Railway freight containers. Additionally, the train load, which is the total weight a train can move, will increase from 5,400 tons to 12,000 tons, a 220% increase. Moreover, the train lengths are also set to double versus existing trains from about 700 meters to 1,500 meters. A major challenge of using existing rail lines, many of which are primarily used to transport passenger traffic, is congestion leading to significant transport times and often delays. Dedicated lines not only eliminate this challenge, but allow for dramatically faster movement of goods, as trains can travel at average speeds of 65 km an hour versus just 25 km per hour today. Think about this improvement in the context of a popular middle school maths equation. Time equals distance over speed. By increasing average speeds, the time to destination can be reduced by a factor of two and a half. The sum effect of all these improvements can be stated simply. The dedicated freight corridors will allow us to transport more goods over greater distances in shorter time periods. The holy trinity of logistics. This is why the DFCs are so important to the Indian economy. Imagine seamlessly transporting goods from Maharashtra to Haryana in less than a day, or from UP to West Bengal in a matter of hours. This is a game changer if there ever was one. This sort of one-day delivery currently requires air transport, which can now be done with rail at a much lower cost. Let's think of the improvements in the context of economies of scale. Economies of scale, as the name suggests, refers to the economic advantage that accrues as a result of spreading a set of costs over a larger number of goods, thereby reducing the cost per unit. By transporting a significantly larger number of goods, economies of scale reduce costs, thereby enabling lower costs to end consumers, as well as higher profitability and capital efficiency for sellers. Let's use an elementary example to understand this better. Imagine that as things stand, it takes two and a half days to transport 100 units from Mumbai to the final destination in Rajasthan. Let's imagine that the cost of transporting these 100 units is 1 lakh rupees. Now, imagine that instead I could transfer 180 units for the same price. My per unit transportation cost will fall from 1000 rupees to about 550. That saving can be redistributed to other purposes or simply allow me to lower prices to end customers, thereby increasing quantity demanded. And remember, instead of two and a half days, all this could happen in 24 hours. The DFCs will enable very real savings. Reducing costs also reduce working capital requirements. Companies will simply require less capital to operate, 
meaning lower debt levels and lower interest payments. This is why the DFCs are critical to the economy. Another advantage of DFCs is that they are ideal for precision scheduled railroading, a system of freight railroading that revolutionized the flailing rail industry in North America. Unlike traditional systems, precision railroading relies on fixed point deliveries. More importantly, rather than offering different duration options to customers, this system operates on predetermined schedules, irrespective of load. This enables lower idle inventory and easier intermodal transport. I won't go any further on this as the topic requires a much longer explanation, but suffice to say precision railroading reduces costs and makes railroading more efficient. By enabling precision railroading, the DFCs will further reduce costs for transporting goods across state lines. This system makes intermodal transport far more efficient and cost effective as wait times are significantly reduced and manpower requirements fall. This is particularly important given the implementation of GST, as GST incentivizes fewer but larger and more efficient nodes in the supply chain, long distance transport of goods becomes increasingly important. The DFCs are the final piece of that puzzle that facilitates the necessary transfer of goods over significant distances. Imagine a company with large warehousing operations. Think of companies like Amazon and Flipkart, or even the primary manufacturers of goods. Such companies were earlier incentivized to create several manufacturing hubs and warehouses to service multiple markets within the country. For instance, they may set up smaller manufacturing units in each state. Now, it is easier to set up fewer but larger and more efficient manufacturing sites that can service much larger catchment areas. Remember, with DFCs, you can transfer goods to a destination two states away in a day, something that earlier may have taken up to a week using a combination of different transport systems. This, in turn, allows the primary manufacturers of goods to enjoy economies of scale in manufacturing, thereby further bringing down costs. There is another important point to consider. Everyone talks about China Plus One as an important driver of manufacturing and exports from India. But simply relying on global diversification is not enough. We have to create the infrastructure that enables us to service the world's needs for goods and services. The dedicated freight corridor is a vital step in that direction. Through the DFCs, moving goods to ports or other export points will become significantly cheaper and less time-consuming. This makes our exports more competitive, not just in terms of price, but in terms of reliability and timeliness of supply. Moreover, the DFCs will help create more manufacturing hubs in the country. We can create many more genome valleys and similar manufacturing focus zones across the country for all sectors by enabling cost-effective and rapid movement of goods to export points. This may, over time, prove to be the most important effect of the DFCs, as exports will enable the Indian economy to become a multiple of its domestic self. The DFCs should begin operations by the end of this financial year, and they haven't come a moment too soon. I wish everyone connected to the project well, and hope that the DFCs prove to be an even bigger success than any of us think they will. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful. Let me know what other advantages you think the DFCs will have. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and share this with everyone you think will find it interesting. Thanks for watching, Sensei Kujaku.